Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to talk about real analysis and the topic on which we are going to have a discussion in this video is least upper bound and greatest lower bound. I hope you must have seen my second video in which I have discussed about bounds of a set. But before we proceed to have the concept about least upper bound greatest lower bound let us recall the bounds of a set. Now we know that beta is an upper bound for a set x subset of r it simply means that for all a in x a is less than or equal to beta similarly alpha is a lower bound for x subset r it simply means that for all a in x alpha is less than or equal to a and also beta prime is not an upper bound for x it simply means there exists a in x such that beta prime is not an upper bound it means it has to be a smaller than a and alpha prime is not a lower bound for x it implies that there exists a in x such that alpha prime is greater than a so these are the concepts of upper bound and lower bound now let us move to know about the least upper bound and greatest lower bound least upper bound and greatest lower bound have different names too the least upper bound is known as supremum and the greatest lower bound is known as infimum the abbreviations which we use for least upper bound and greatest lower bound are like this this is lubx or supex similarly glbx or infex now we proceed to have a concept of least upper bound now we we should talk of least upper bound of a set x only when it is bounded above because if we don't have a set of upper bounds we cannot talk of least upper power bounds now a number beta is a least upper bound of x subset r if now beta has to be least upper bound least upper bound means least of all upper bounds and therefore firstly it has to be an upper bound so beta is an upper bound and the second is it has to be least of all upper bounds it means any number is smaller than beta is not an upper bound of x now let us have a mathematical formulation of these two phrases now beta is an upper bound it is very simple we have already written about it beta is an upper bound means for all a in x a is less than equal to b for having the mathematical framework for second one let us split in two parts first part is any real number is smaller than beta and the second part is is not an upper bound for x now a number is smaller than beta what could be a number is smaller than beta we don't know the size so if we subtract something positive from beta we get a number smaller than beta and so for epsilon greater than 0 beta minus epsilon is a smaller number than beta now again another term is here any real number now any real number means 
our epsilon is arbitrary so it is any epsilon the second phrase is is not an upper bound means beta minus epsilon is not an upper bound it means there exists a in x such that beta minus epsilon is less than a if we combine these two phrases then what we get that for every or arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 there exists a in x such that beta minus epsilon is less than a so with these two mathematical phrases we can have the definition of least upper bound which runs like this a real number beta is said to be the least upper bound of a set x subset r if for all a in x a is less than or equal to beta and for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a in x such that beta minus epsilon is less than a the first clause guarantees that beta is an upper bound the second clause guarantees that beta is the least of all upper bounds if you want to see it in the real line then what is the situation say this is our real line and this is our set x then beta is exactly located here on the set this is the position of beta and therefore if we subtract any small quantity from beta epsilon you may assume it to be very very small so if you subtract any positive quantity however small from beta then you find a real number a which is element of x and that is greater than beta minus epsilon so you have an element of x which exceeds beta minus epsilon where beta minus epsilon is any number smaller than beta so this is the situation of beta when you consider it as a least upper bound for the set x now let us proceed to have the concept of greatest lower bound now greatest lower bound means the greatest of all lower bounds so alpha is said to be the greatest lower bound of a set x if firstly it is a lower bound means alpha is less than or equal to a and the second is it is the greatest of all lower bounds so alpha plus epsilon is greater than a for every epsilon greater than 0 where a belongs to x if we see it on the real line so this is the real line and if this is our set then the position of alpha is somewhere here so if we increase alpha by any positive quantity however small then you will find an element a of the set x which is smaller than alpha plus epsilon or alpha plus epsilon is greater than a so this is the situation of greatest lower bound so we now have the definition of greatest lower bound and least upper bound let us proceed further now if we see the whole picture of the set the set u of all upper bounds of x and set l of all lower bounds of x then the whole picture looks like this which is on your screen now so this is the set x and this is the set u of all upper bounds for, for x and this is the set l of all lower bounds of the set x now you can see here what i write that lub of x is the glb of u and similarly lub of l is glb of x it is very simple to prove this and i hope you will be able to prove it so we can see the picture of alpha and beta and conceptualize the position of alpha and beta on the real line together with the set the set of its all upper bounds and the set of its all lower bounds now let us proceed to and have some example now for finite sets as i have already discussed in my second lecture for finite sets if i consider say a1 a2 and an where we assume that the elements are increasing in order then the elements can be placed on the real line like a1 a2 
a n and in this case the max element of this set is the l u b and this is a n and the mean element of this set is the g l b and which is equal to a 1 and if we consider a singleton say x equal to a then in this case the max the min the l u b the g l b all of x are equal to a and therefore for x i am talking of this so max mean l u b g l b for a singleton all are equal and they are equal to the element present in the set but you know that the concept of bounds is more related to the infinite sets and therefore let us have some examples of infinites now suppose i take this set x equal to 1 on 1 upon 2 1 upon 3 1 upon n and so on and if i put it on the real line then we have elements like this and the elements approach 0 so if we want to frame the set u then what is u the set of all real numbers which are greater than or equal to 1 and l is set of all real numbers which are less than or equal to 0 and therefore the lub of x lub of x is the glb of u and this is 1 and glb of x is equal to 0 we can see that 1 belongs to the set x but 0 does not belong to the set x so we have a situation where we have least upper bound present in the set but the set does not contain its greatest lower bound let us consider another example suppose x is the open interval 0 1 then in that case if we place the elements on the real line we have 0 and 1 but we cannot have a max element or mean element in this case we have to talk about the bounds and therefore if we try to find u then what is u real numbers which are greater than or equal to 1 and l is all those real numbers which are less than or equal to 0 and therefore l u b of x is the g l b of u and that is going to be 1 and g l b of x is going to be 0 here you can see that 1 does not belong to x 0 also does not belong to s so the set x does not contain any of its uh, greatest lower bound or uh, least upper bound so this is the situation in which infinite sets may or may not contain their least upper bound or greatest lower bound now with these examples let us proceed further and ask about the existence and uniqueness of least upper bound greatest lower bound in mathematics the question of existence is always important so we should must inspect where whether we can have greatest lower bound and least upper bound for a given set of course a bounded set the existence part is answered by these axioms now these axioms are least upper bound axioms and greatest lower bound axioms if one is accepted at axiom the second can be derived from the other and therefore if we accept one as axiom the second should be treated as a theorem now any of these axiom is known as completeness axiom in r let us read it any non-empty set x subset of r which is bounded above has a least upper bound and similarly any non-empty set which is bounded below has a greatest lower bound and therefore they guarantees for least upper bound and greatest lower bound if the set is bounded but what i make a point is the phrase non-empty is very important because these axioms are true 
for non empty sets of real number systems also i take a caution that these axioms completeness axiom does not hold in q that is the set of rational numbers and therefore with axioms these least upper bound axiom and greatest lower bound axioms in our hand we can guarantee the existence of least upper bound and greatest lower bound for bounded set now let us talk about the uniqueness of the greatest lower bound and least upper bound we will firstly prove the uniqueness of least upper bound and i hope that you would be able to prove the uniqueness of greatest lower bound likewise let beta and beta dash be two lubs of a set x subset of r now taking beta as lub and beta dash as ub what we get that beta is less than equal to beta dash and similarly if we reverse the role taking beta dash as lub and beta as ub if the roles are reversed then we get beta dash is less than equal to beta and therefore together they imply that beta is equal to beta dash so you cannot have two least upper bounds for a given set of course we are taking a set which is bounded above and similarly you can prove the uniqueness of greatest lower bound i am not going to prove that in this video now let us proceed to talk about the empty set what is the situation in the case of empty set empty set is denoted by phi we can see that any real number is an upper bound as well as a lower bound for phi and therefore if we want to have the least of all real numbers then you don't find any real number similarly if you want to have the greatest of all real numbers you are not able to find any greatest of all real numbers and so we can say that supremum phi that is least upper bound of phi and infimum phi that is the greatest lower bound phi do not exist in r however if we extend the real number system and include minus infinity and infinity into it and then the system is known as extended real number system then in that case you have the least of all real numbers which is minus infinity and you have the greatest of all real numbers which is infinity and so in this case i can say that supremum of phi which is the least upper bound of phi is minus infinity and infimum of phi which is greatest lower bound of phi is plus infinity and therefore in this case the supremum is smaller than the infimum you can say like that so uh, this is the situation of empty set as far as bounds are concerned now with all this i finish my video and i hope you must have enjoyed it and grabbed the concept of least upper bound and greatest lower bound in the next video we will be talking about the completeness of real number system the ordered structure of real number system and the rational number system till then bye thank you very much